Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in. Today we're going to be talking about breaking barriers, our conversation on mental health awareness. I think our one part is that we don't have a conversation about mental health awareness. And I think the biggest piece of it, because May is mental health awareness. So for those who are going through those issues, for those that need awareness, for those who need to have some assistance in moving forward, this is for you right now. So I'm thankful for everybody that is joining right now because it is 8 o'clock. I promised to do one last week. I kind of like got confused, but guess what? I'm doing one this week. I'm doing one every Friday in the month of May because guess what? This is needed. This this whole segment is about breaking barriers, a conversation on mental health awareness. First and foremost, hello and welcome to today's special Facebook Live session, Breaking Barriers, a Conversation on Mental Health Awareness. I'm your host, Jeremy B. Sims, a.k.a. Judah Bernard. And today we're diving into an incredible, important topic that affects us all, directly or indirectly, mental health. Our goal today is not just to talk about mental health issues, but also to take tackle the stigma that often surrounds them. Whether you're joining us from Miami, whether you're joining us from Washington, D.C., whether you're joining us from Mississippi, or anywhere else around the globe, this conversation is for you. As you see in the notes that we do have, you can go to www.jbsims.com. That is my website for Hill Ministry and other things. You can go to www.jbsims slash coaching. You can go to www.jbsims slash writing for all of my writing materials and other things too as well. I'm going to mention a couple other things. I'm a little bit later, but let's understand mental health. Let's start by understanding what mean what what we mean by mental health. What do we mean by mental health? It's just not the absence of mental health. It's about being cognitively, emotionally, and socially healthy. Let me say that again. It's about cognitively, emotionally, and socially being healthy. This means being able to handle number one, stress, being able to relate to others and make decisions. So many times we're not able to make those decisions. So many times we become reactionary and becomes a reactionary behavior and we can't make the decisions because we're so into the reactionary behaviors. So we must understand that handling, handling handling those emotions, handling that cognitively, and also handling that socially where it needs to be healthy to handle stress, relate to others, and also make decisions. But the number one thing is stigma or the negative association that surrounds mental health issues. The biggest problem that everybody said is taboo. Many people say, especially in the black, um, I say brown and brown and black community, brown and black community, um, African-American community, whatever you suggest that it should be, I want to make it global. It's in a community where a lot of people have had mental health issues. It can make it hard for people to seek help. Why? Because they fear judgment or discrimination. And I know most of you that's on here probably fear some type of judgment or discrimination. But guess what? We're going to talk about that stigma. Let me talk about the impact of the stigma. Stigma is just, isn't just is just hurtful. The both thing is hazardous. One thing is once a stigma is placed upon you, it becomes a part of you. And when you accept that stigma, it becomes hazardous. It can lead to people not seeking the help they need and worsening their conditions. In places like myself, Washington, D.C., where the pace is fast and the stress levels can be high, addressing this stigma is critical. 
We've got to talk openly, show empathy, and support one another. Remember, mental health conditions are not a sign of weakness. They are a medical condition that require care and treatment. It's about care and treatment. Let that be the forefront of this topic about care and, and treatment. Let's talk about some resources that you can get help in. It's crucial to know where to turn when you are someone you need who needs help. For those who are even in Miami, the Miami-Dade Dade County provides resources like the Miami-Dade Crisis Intervention Team. If you're in Washington, D.C., the Department of Behavioral Health offers various services. And, of course, there are national and international resources. Let's break those down for a minute. In Miami, if you're in Miami, Miami-Dade Crisis Intervention Team, let me give you that information. In Miami-Dade and Monroe counties, 988 instead of 211 is the best number to call for mental health crisis. Let me repeat that. In Miami-Dade and Monroe counties, 988 instead of 211 is the best number to call for mental health crisis. In Washington, D.C., the D.C. Department of Behavioral Health, and that's 888-793-4357. In Washington, D.C., the D.C. Department of Behavioral Health, and that is 888-793-4357. Also, I want everybody to be aware that it's a national hotline out there, and the National Suicide Prevention Health Lifeline is 1-800-273-TALK. The National Hotline, once again, is National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, 1-800-273-TALK. And guess what? For those who are around the world, too, as well, we have some international information to you. Well, it's Befrienders Worldwide, and that website link is Befrienders. That's B as in boy, E as in effort, Everett, F as in Frank, R as in right, I as in igloo, E as in Everett, N as in Nancy, D as in dog, E is in Everett, R is in Wright, S is in Sam dot org. And that's the international befrienders worldwide. They can help with intervention and crisis too as well. I told you I'm here about information and I'm going to give you that information. So be aware of that. Guess what? These are important lines, crisis centers, and things that can help in this process too as well. One thing I want to understand is I want to encourage personal growth and community support. Improving mental health isn't just about individual treatment. It's about a community support. Why can't we support each other each and every day that we live our lives and embracing what mental health is? Mental health is exactly what it is. And sometimes people are not able to function in that society because of their mental health. But I want everyone to know that we can engage with local mental health initiatives, participate in workshops, and use social media platforms like the one we're on right now to spread awareness and support each other. Remember, every conversation we start, but guess what? I'm going to do one better. Every conversation you start, every story you share, helps to break down the barriers of stigma. So let's start sharing those stories. Let's start making those conversations applicable in every environment so we can help to break down the barriers of stigma. As I conclude today, and I don't want to be just brief, but I want to make sure that we have information that is globally available to anyone. I'm, I'm concluding this part of it, but I want to make a grand grand introduction after that i want to thank you for joining to today's conversation but remember mental health is a journey not a destination let me say that again mental health is a journey it's not a destination that means it's a continuing effort it's a continuing opportunity and what does that mean that we need to work together to create environments that support mental health awareness and treatment Keep the conversation going. Why don't you? Check on your loved ones and don't hesitate to seek help when needed. I want you to thank you and take care. But moving forward and on to the next, because I don't want to just harp on mental health, I want to make a brand new announcement that I'm actually an author of five children's books. 
I have just been working very, 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 very hard on these children books. And now I have the final, final copies. I don't know if anybody else has anything. Let me go back. Do anybody else have any conversations or chat or questions about the mental health segment we just did? Let's do that. So if you have some, make sure you put it in the comment section and we'll discuss that right quick. All right, if there be no one, let's continue on. So guess what? At the end of the day, I have five children's book, and I'm going to order in which I've written them, and I'll give some information about them. If you look in the chat, you do see www.lulu.com, and that's L-U-L-U.com. That's a self-publishing website where I self-publish my books. Most of these are readable. And actually, um, the first one is um, um, ages anybody that can read it can actually read it. Most of uh, my books, I want my parents and or guardians or, or older siblings to read these at bedtime and things like that because it talks about a lot of things about um, different, different things. And I'm going to read each one. So you can actually get these at lulu.com, and that's L-U-L-U.com. And the only thing you have to look up is Jeremy Sims. Make sure that you're writing them down so you can actually know my five books. Because guess what? When I was born, they did not stop creating Jeremy Sims. So guess what? Look at Jeremy Sims and the title of these books, and you go ahead and purchase yours now. I'm also doing my book tour um, for my children's books in Jackson, Mississippi, on June 9th, and that's 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. at the Jackson State East Center, and I'm more than a, and thrilled to be hosting um, this, being partnering with um, Brown Girl, Brown Boy Literacy Foundation with Dr. Pam Gurley, and we're just going to be excited about the, the awesome event that we have coming up. And once again, who don't have that, that's June 9th, 2024, 12 p.m. to 4, 5 p.m., and that's at the Jackson State University East Center, and that's on Raymond Road. So definitely go ahead and get your tickets. You can go to Brown Girl, Brown Boy Literacy uh, Foundation, Google that, and you can actually get your tickets. And if you don't have them, um, they're free tickets. So any kid, any adult, we have so many activities that's going on. It's just going to be so amazing. So these are my actual books that I will be showing. My first one is In Our Hands, Building a World of Kindness. In Our Hands, Building a World of Kindness is a children's book that inspires and encourages young readers to en engage in acts of kindness to make a positive impact on the world. The narrative likely centers around diverse children from various backgrounds who come together to perform kind deeds, demonstrating every small thoughtful action contributes to a creating and more compassionate and inclusive world. And I'm going to go ahead and show you this right quick. Some of the vivid colors in here. And this is actually an affirmation book. Let me get to a vivid color page. This is one of the pages here. Very, very vivid color. Very vivid color. I'm going to go to the second book. My second book is The Village of Broken Pieces. This is also by me. The Village of Broken Pieces is more than just a story. It's a journey through a world where each difference is a patch in a magnificent quilt of life. Perfect for young readers. This tale will teach the values of diversity, the importance of empathy, and the unbeatable, unbeatable strength of a community united. So curl up with this book and let yourself be wrapped in the warmth of a story that celebrates the imperfect, cherishes the unique, and marvels at the magic of coming together. After all, every day is a perfect day to visit the village of Patchwork. Let me go ahead and show you some of the colorful pages in here. My friend Elsie, I'm going to go ahead and show Elsie right quick. It's so great, it's so great, so great. All right, I'm going to go to the next one. Every little kid acts why, right? 
Why is a vibrant children's book that takes readers on an enhancing journey through the eyes of Charlie? And I want everybody to know that this is a very diverse book. So everybody can be Charlie and they're a diverse group of friends. United by the joy of discovery and propelled by the endless dance of curiosity, the young explorers is traversed through mysterious caves, expansive forests, and the vast ocean, each step fueled by their quest to understand the world around them. Through captivating illustrations and compelling storytelling, Y celebrates the power of questions, not just to seek answers, but to forge connections and open doors to new adventures. It reminds us that curiosity not only leads to knowledge, but also unites us in the shared experience of exploring the unknown. With every page, children are invited to join this dance of curiosity, a dance that promised to lead them to the furthest corners of the imagination and beyond fostering a lifelong love for learning and discovery. Let me go ahead and show you one of the colorful, vibrant pages. Just hoping you can see that. We're going to go to our next one. Our Beautiful Selves. Our Beautiful Selves, through heartfelt storytelling and vivid ima imagery, Our Beautiful Selves inspires readers to embrace their own inner beauty and recognize the beauty in others. With themes of kindness, bravery, creativity, and inclusion, this book serves as a reminder that true beauty lies not in our appearances, but are in the essence of who we are. I'm going to go ahead and show you one of our beautiful, beautiful people from Mississippi that is, is, is introduced in here. Isn't that lovely? Yes, 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 yes. All right. Now, my last but definitely not least book, because I think children's books are very important. And this is a hardcover. This is a hardcover. Together in Faith. Together in Faith. That is my name at the bottom. Dive in Together in Faith, a heartwarming tale that transports young readers to a magical garden where every corner holds a new wonder. Follow the adventures of Amina. David, Maria, Ann, and their friend as they discover the beauty of nature and the strength of friendship. In this vibrant, eaten, diverse children play and learn together, surrounded by lush greenery and mystical characters. Each page bursts with colorful illustrations and engaging stories that celebrate differences and encourage cooperation. Join our young heroes as they embark on quests that teach them that about kindness, acceptance and the power of working together together in faith is more than just a story it's a journey into a world where faith binds everyone in harmony and love perfect for bedtime stories and classroom readings this book nurtures young minds to appreciate the world's diversity and the values that connect us all let me go ahead and get this in here and this is one of our characters right here and this is Amina with a hijab on. All right. I'm glad that I introduced these books. And also, that's Lulu.com. You can get each and every one of them on Lulu.com for your, for your individual, your children, your loved ones, your nieces, your nephews. And also, guess what? As a gift, you can see this where you can actually write their name in the book. This book belongs to. So that's in all of my books. I just want us to just celebrate diversity. Um, we do have um, disabled, disabled children in there too as well. So it's about just making our whole world in a, in a, in a harmonious global environment. One thing I want to tell people is it's about making the best of this world. What does that look like for each and every one of us? Let's go ahead and check on that mental health awareness. Let's go ahead and check on ourselves. Most of our books is talking about self-assessment too as well. Outside of these children books, you can go to J Jeremy B. Sims and just Google. And you'll find out how many books that I actually have out there. 
not only for children, but for adults too as well. Most of them are self-help books, and they are on biblical perspectives, and also some other ones too as well. This is trying to teach us how her harmony and being able to have self-discipline is admirable and needed to be put into every existence in which we are in. So as we leave here today, I want to thank you and definitely take care of yourself. And like he said, um, peace, love, and happiness, it's about that. But how many of us are actually doing it? So as I leave here today, I want to leave you with a small snippet of understand who you are while you're here. And what can you do to make the world a better place? As I leave here today, I want to thank you. I appreciate everything that everyone is doing in this world. But we all can take the time out to do just a little bit better. I thank you for your time as well as your appreciation. I'm signing off. For those who don't know, you can go and look on my YouTube channel. That's Judy Bernard. I will drop this. It will drop on Sunday. Um, as you can see it again, if you have questions, please don't forget to DM me on any social media platform. I, um, Instagram is The Rise Creating Your Voice. Facebook is Judah Bernard. I do speaking engagements. I do a lot of things. But my thing is be able to get to know me on the on the real. And I think people really don't know me. And I'm just not starting out because I've been in this business about 20 years. I'm also getting a lifetime a presidential lifetime achievement award on May 25th in Tampa, Florida. I'm sorry the tickets are sold out, but guess what? Um, it's because of you listening. It's because of you um, sharing. It's about you sharing your stories. It's about us coming together as one as we build a community and a community of support to engage those who are going through mental health issues. Um, I'm not heal, but provide wellness for them. I thank you for the time, peace, love, and happiness. Have a great night.